Uh, so, Craig, how's everything going with you? Hi, everything's great. Um, it's been uh, it's been a little while since you and I spoke, so yeah, uh, little appreciate bit. you having me back. Um, you know, we're uh, you know we're um, currently uh, looking for warehousing space. I know that was something um, that we wanted to talk about because uh, you know it's a, it's such a weird market at the moment in that way. Yeah. I know you're uh, you're in it every day. Uh, I've got the uh, pleasure of having to stare at multiple uh, facilities <laughs> with. You know, Craig was out on the road sort of uh, was it a week ago, seeing some more. Or yeah, maybe? saw yeah. another five in one like day. Periodically, he'll go out and see three or four. Yeah, d- depending on the real estate agent that's trying to help us, because you know, yeah, tell him about. That yeah, I mean, process. it's a, it's a, you know, I mean, Kevin, you know, especially mm-hmm. in New Jersey where we're looking, uh, there's a, okay. there's a lot of different types of space that we're, yeah. you know, and there's space um, all over too. Especially under uh, 100,000, you get some interesting older buildings with some weird yeah, that's, layouts. That's hard to find. Uh, you know, that sort of stuff. So, um, the way we're looking at it, uh, you know, at this point is, you know, we're, we're looking more sublease while we're waiting for potentially mm-hmm. the market to come down a little bit as more yeah. uh, inventory comes on the market. Yeah. You know, we're, uh, we're seeing a lot of different uh, kind of movements mm-hmm. in, in the market, uh, especially in that size range. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's such an interesting point there because it is uh, like, you know, we, we live close by each other. Yeah. Actually, he's in, he's in free old. I'm down in uh, Bordentown area. And I'm sure, you know, in my area, it's insane in Columbus, Florence and Burlington County there in, in New Jersey. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to see and find even like any new construction that's sub 100,000 square feet. Like you said, it's yeah, you won't not find a it. focus. Yeah. You won't find yeah. it. Um, and what's interesting is, you know, you have some of the bigger buildings that have been built over the last couple of years, half a million square feet, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. No one, it, it's sitting there. It's empty. And yeah. the landlords are okay with that for some reason, which I find fascinating. I can't imagine that. Yeah. I assume <laughs> in the next year or so that some of that's going to change. They might end up having to subdivide it a little bit, maybe yeah. take it, you know, split it into two or whatever. But yeah, we wanted to, we wanted to kind of dip our toes in. So we're looking in that 30 to 50,000 range. And like I said, you get a vast difference, mm-hmm. you know, a ra- a range of different uh, options, but they're all sort of, uh, you know, older with yeah. uh, weird column uh, uh, layouts and yeah. you lower know, roof. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. Uh, lower clear heights for sure. Um, but still pricey. Uh, you know, New Jersey yeah. is one of the priciest uh, warehouse yeah, markets yeah. In, the, in the country. Pricey um, for everything. <laughs> so we're hoping, uh, like I said, we're hoping to, to lock something in here for uh, about 12 months and then find something bigger down the line. Nice. Do you have any yeah. leads for him? These? Uh, hmm. Not off the top of my head um, in that size range, but but we're definitely we're putting it out there and yeah. into the the air there. You know, if anybody uh, or if anybody actually has space that maybe they want to sublease you guys, I think you know, that's a, a good opportunity there as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, should, I mean, should I, be open to a, a, a co type space where this company's in here and I'm in here, or you, you kind of want your own. You, I, when you lock the door, you want to be know that you're the last one out. Yeah, I mean, I think part of part of what this uh, the idea that we had behind this, and we've been looking now since uh, last spring, mm. um, and we, oh, we wow. really struggled yeah. to find something uh, that fit what we wanted. Uh, the biggest issue that we found was during COVID, when warehouse capacity was almost you know nothing was available, mm. we got pushed out with some of our partners. And don't get me wrong, we love our partners; they do a great job for us. But yeah. when push came to shove the people that they were working with storage and and that was more on a consistent basis not in a project base which is a lot of what we do yeah especially around cross docking and transloading uh we were the we were the first ones to go Uh, so what we want to do here is we have a bit of a critical mass in business and this type of thing in in new jersey we want to take it we want to own the process Mm. gives us a little bit more touch with uh, the customer freight and uh and also it gives us the uh the control over what can come in and what can't versus someone else telling us mm. what what we can and can't do. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that makes a lot of sense. And, and uh, you know, it's good to have that that control, especially when you want to really have that great customer experience. And, and like you said, you know, you can't, can't necessarily just, you know, when, when things happen, you know, be pushed out a little bit and then you're kind of stuck in a sense. In yeah, it's how ways, do you, right? you know, there's, there's a delay at the port. We're pulling a container. How do we tell one of our partners, I mean, Sometimes can we can late. work with them. Hey, yeah, can you stay until seven while the guy gets out of yeah. the out of the port? You know, even though that's three hours past when they normally close. Yeah. You know, it's some it's it's more difficult in those things. Where I can call my warehouse manager and say, Hey guys, we're gonna need to 
do yeah, this. Yeah, you, you're going to stay. For the further. customer, this, yeah. is, this is important, you know. <laughs> yeah, tell, yeah. Tell, your, tell your wife to put the dinner on warmer. I'm, I'm just <laughs> yeah, kidding. Yeah. I'm not saying the wife cooks the dinner. <laughs> I'm so, myself trouble. Oh, Robbie, you were doing so good all day. I know, day, I know. know. <laughs> Women in trucking, woo. No. So, so, I mean, it's definitely interesting, and, it, and it's interesting perspective, too, on, on that side of the market. I mean, I, I think that there is an opportunity in the market for developers to, to create these smaller spaces because I, I think even as you see, um, you know, e-commerce shippers and things like that uh, that are coming in the market and, and some of these like smaller boutique 3PLs as well. Like they're looking for those smaller spaces too. And I, I mean, I've heard some crazy stories of, you know, people of interesting spaces that they've started in, uh, you know, but but I, I think there is like a, a market for that. I mean, do you think like uh, developers could find a sweet spot there? I mean, if they really want to work on it, I think they could. I yeah. think the bigger issue is, and you know, real estate in New Jersey is so expensive. Yeah. So for them to, to get a return on their investment for building even a campus of 45 or 50,000 square foot facilities, yeah. I just don't know if that's going to be a benefit to them in the longer term. Also, you think mm-hmm. about, you know, when you have one 250,000 square foot facility, you can at least, you have one facility manager that really yeah. can focus on the building as a whole and, you know, that sort of thing. When you have a campus of, you know, three, four, five, or six of them, I can understand where they lose a little bit of the efficiency, especially, right. you know, the purchase of the land alone is, it's obscene. So, oh, yeah. uh, you know, the closer you get to the port too, uh, you know, it's just, the yeah. taxes, everything, I can imagine, but they're, when they're crunching those numbers, I don't know if that makes sense financially. That's why mm. we sit there with a lot of these older buildings in in good locations but very weird layouts very you know only have one doctor or two doctors yeah. if you're lucky uh, especially at that size older type places that at one time yeah. years ago were meat packing or you know what i mean like they've, all they've sorts been... of things like that yeah i mean um we looked at a place in carteret new jersey great location um it was actually owned by one of the big refinery um companies that are there oh, okay yeah um, but it ha- looks like it hadn't been touched in 25 years. It actually used to be a food service, like a yeah. food production facility. And we're looking at it like we couldn't even imagine, mm. you know, eating anything that was produced here, <laughs> you know. But um, I think that's just because it hadn't been touched. It was basically just storage of like, um, you know, pipeline parts and, and the mechanicals for, for the refinery. It wasn't like, yeah. hasn't been, like it literally hadn't looked like it had been touched in 25 years. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you get those, or there's another great one that we, a great location we saw in Newark, but it was, the columns were only 10 feet apart and they were all the oh, way through so the building tight. of like yeah. 40,000 square feet. So yeah. how are we going to, how are we going to be efficient in any sort of, uh, you know, staging of or, or storage? Incarnation that could have ever been useful. I have no idea, but I mean, this is 10 feet right here. The booth is 10 by 10. I mean, that's like yeah. so close. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't do much around that. And unless the I mean, building that was above had hitting columns all day, huge had huge weight above it where you needed to have that. I mean, support. it did have a piece of the office was above, but that was only in a part of the building. Yeah. So, but it was built in 1959 or something like that. So, you know, only had yeah. uh, 18 foot clear. You know, the yeah. whole thing. So it just. You know, those type of things, I don't know who it would fit these days because you're not going to be efficient in that space. Online. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting to get that perspective from you, Craig, and kind of hear that. Um, certainly, there, I think there's there's some opportunity there somewhere. I, I think definitely that there's a, there's a hole in the market for that type of uh, space. And and if anybody out there has, uh, has some space uh, for Craig in, in Jersey, definitely let us know. Right. We'd be happy to, to make that happen for you. Um, so curious, you know, as you're here at the show, it manifests like what's, what's some of the biggest uh, takeaways, some of the most interesting things you've seen? You know, last year uh, when we were here, we found it was really about, you know, AI and system connectivity and visibility. This year, that's still here, but it's way more about sustainability, mm. uh, electric vehicle, uh, the autonomous stuff is still hanging around, which I, is always great um, to see. But yeah, it's really about sustainability and, and trying mm. to transition, I think, from internal combustion uh, to, yeah. to electric or... Uh, any other zero uh, emission um, uh, mm-hmm. kind of carbon neutral uh, conveyance, which uh, yeah. I thought was fascinating. And we got to meet a lot of really interesting people that are building out the grids for them, the charging, uh, some of the carriers in California that are already taking the leap, not really having yeah. volume to, to fit that. And, uh, you know, 
in California especially, it's coming whether anybody likes it or not. Yeah. So it's better to be out in front of it in our mind than mm. to be lagging behind. Yeah. Uh, we spoke to some people who are building out charging yards and that sort of thing. And what they had mentioned to us was there's going to be a delta where the real estate, especially in that Los Angeles area, for charging and that is not going to be available anymore basically in the next five to six years even though mm. the mandate's not happening until 2035 yeah all of the folks um all the customers all the carriers that are investing now and building these relationships and getting a better understanding of what uh ev um ranges are how we can sque- how they can squeeze out every kilowatt per mile that they can get in a charge all of those guys that are doing this hard work now, not really knowing where the volume is going to come from, is going to benefit down the line because if you're rushing to get in at the end, yeah. you're going to be left without a chair when the music stops. It's mm. that's basically what we're 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 learning here to the, at Manifest this year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's so important to get get ahead of that curve, like you said, and be able to to know what's going on uh, before you you wait until the, the clock strikes midnight, twenty thirty five, and you're you're stuck, right? A little bit. And so, ten ten yeah. years in our industry, you know, these days seems to go that's, by in a blink of an yeah, eye. Definitely. So, but I mean, to swing it back around to the warehouse side, learning about a lot of the credits that are available to uh, warehouses in California that uh, have EV trucks come there. For every EV truck that comes to their facility, and it's based on square footage and some other uh, some other metrics, but they get a they get a tax credit for that. Yeah. So you know, having those people join in on this is only going to benefit the the whole thing. But are there problems? Is this you know a bit of you know a frustration for a lot of people? Completely, completely understand that. But no matter what and california's led on these type of things in the past whether it's uh you know miles per gallon uh, mm-hmm. emission standards that sort of thing it's coming they're not going to stop so the sooner people just come to grips with that and start working together to figure out how they can make that happen make the power grid more uh, resilient make sure that there's enough charging for all these trucks because you know there's over a thousand trucks a day going into the port of la long beach alone yeah. it's not even counting oakland how are we going to all get together and do this? And I think there are customers that are starting to get on board with this. A few bids that we've been a part of that we know um, uh, of big enterprise shippers that are, are getting into this mix and figuring this out now. Because come, you know, like I said, five or six, seven years from now, there's not going to be a lot of uh, a lot of availability on some of these things for, especially on yeah. infrastructure to build out. Yeah, because the real estate's just not going to be there anymore. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's such a great uh, takeaway there and a great tip to, to be able to, to get ahead of that and really focus in and make sure that you're you're getting things in line to be able to do that. Because like you said, I mean, 10 years, you know, it sounds like a lot of time, but it's, it goes very, very quick. Right. So. So, Craig, I want to thank you so much for coming in the booth here, talking to us. I want to thank you again for, for shipping the booth as well. Uh, so we could be here right, to, yeah. to talk with you um, and really appreciate everything you guys do over at, at BWS. Um, and if people want to learn more about BWS, get connected, they want to uh, tell you and sublease you their space or New Jersey there. Uh, what's the best way to do that? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can connect with us uh, through our website, uh, www.bws-logistics.com. Uh, there's a there's a comment section there and uh, that we get a uh, hold up into our info box and uh, we have, uh, you know, it's monitored all the time. So uh, we're happy to uh, connect with anybody. All but right. As always, Kevin, thank you so much. And uh, I'll talk to you soon.